you all. So glad to have you here. Uh, trusting God is going to be your best year to date, right? Your best year to date. And that's what we're going to do here. Every single time we're going to have together here will be to help one another do life together so that we can get the optimum out of life. You know, we can learn from, from, from our history, you know, and, and to, to live today and prepare for tomorrow. Right. That's why we do this. You know, it's not just for the sake of doing it. It's not just to check the box. It's just to do life together. You know, I get to share from my life. Hopefully I, I can have your share from your life and together we can do better. Yeah. So what we've been doing in the, in, in the book club is we've been doing a study through this book, The Good Life. You know, this is a book that was released January of last year. You know, it's a compilation of 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 the of the study of that's been done at the Abbott School for Adult Development. They've been doing this for more than 85 years, you know, studying the life scenario, you know, of people, you know, looking at their life through the different stages, just to understand what it takes to live a quality life, a good life. That is long and is enjoyable. It's well seasoned. So we're lo they're looking for longevity and also a uh, week of life so that you can get the best out of life. You know, that's what they were doing in, in doing the study. You know, so uh, the book is pretty much just a compilation of, of the results that they found. And pretty much a summary is that what it takes to live a quality life is the is the relationships you have in your life. You know, is the number of quality relations, is the number of relationships in the different areas of your life and the quality of those relationships. You know, so that's what we've been looking at ever since, looking at how to, you know, create the right relationships in our life. And we talk called that social fitness. Our, our, our ability to create and sustain relationship is called social fitness. You know, we we'll talk about social fitness. You know, we're presently in chapter six of the book and the title is talking about facing the music, facing life. You know, a lot of us, you know, have a tendency to want to avoid life. You know, having gone through life, you know, the the default setting is to want to avoid pain, right? But, you know, there are two things pretty much that easily motivate us in life of their own accord is pleasure and pain, pleasure and pain, pleasure and pain. When we do nothing, when we're just in the, in the, in the, in the uh, reactive mode, two things that will motivate us pleasure and, and pain, right? The things we, we gravitate towards are the things that give us pleasure. The things we, 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 we kind of run away from are the things that give us pain, right? So of their own, when we don't engage our mind, those two things are the motivation, natural motivation in our life. But sometimes the things that give us pain are the things that are meant to build us up and prepare us for the destiny, that is before us. Sometimes the things that give us pleasure are the things that that lead us to, to that lead to a place that kills our destiny. Our destiny, you know, they are, they are the things that impoverish us. So it's not automatic that it, that that what is giving me pleasure will give me a reward, right? No, it's automatic that what is giving me pain will 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 will, will, will take away from me. Sometimes the things that will hurt to me are painful at first. Sometimes the things that will take away from me are pleasurable at first, you know, so it is not a giving as it were, you know, for us to be at the mercy of those two motivators. We have to engage our mind, you know, not just our heart. We have to engage our mind. You know, this thing that's giving me pleasure, is it is it worth it, right? Is it worth it? Should I have that pleasure now? What would that pleasure do to me? Would that pleasure hurt to me or take away from me? Right, this thing that's giving me pain now, you know, is it worth it? Can I endure the pain and get a reward, or is the pain for the sake of pain? Right, those are things we need to engage and bring ourselves to. Right, and that's what we're discussing in chapter six here facing the music of life, facing life the way life is. You know, another part is that a lot of us wish we live our life wishing, Oh, I wish I was born in America. Oh, I wish I was born into a rich home. 
I wish I was born in, uh, in the West. I wish I was born in the East. Yeah, and we have all those wishes. That's a wishing is, is a waste of time. Right, it's a wasting, it's a waste of the present that you have, which is called today. Right, there's nothing, wishes won't get you anywhere. Wishes aren't horses, they aren't going to buy you anything. It's not wishing, it's not a currency, right? It's not a currency in life. Wishing is, is a gift of the devil to just in captivate you, to make, make you just while away time, waste the way time that you have. Right, life does not work by wishing. What you have, where you are, is all that you have. And it is your seed. It is your seed to get to wherever it is that you want to, to, to get to. You are not limited by your seed, but you must first of all accept your seed because your seed is who you are today. Your seed is where you are today. And it is up to you to use that seed, not deny it. For as long as you're in denial of that seed, you are not going to grow. You are not going to move forward. You are not going to get better. For you to get better, you must accept the seed that you have because that seed is what will take you, is, is what you are going to have to plant to get the forest, to get the mansion, to get the bigness that you want in your future. But it starts from receiving your today, right? You have to accept where you are. You have to accept who you are. You have to accept your history because your history is your seed. Your history is your seed. You, your, your seed is not another person's history. Your, your your history, the way you have been to, where you have come from, that is the seed for your tomorrow. That is the seed for your today. You cannot use any other thing but what and who you are, right? And to do that, you have to face the music. You have to accept it and use it. You cannot use it until you accept it, right? And and that's what we're, 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 we're trying to get, you know, from chapter six here talking about facing the music of life, right? Facing the music of life. All right. I could get to do all the time. I'm going to bring up my slide, you know, because I do have a slide I prepared, you know, pretty much dancing around the book. And we're going to talk from a slide. So facing the music, that's a title. So we start with these two, these two chords here, where, you know, which we looked at also when we took the first part in, in the, in the chapter, you know, at least the first one. It says there's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light comes in. <laughs> you know, last week, last time I was also quoting the scripture, you know, the Bible talks about the fact that uh, God, God puts his treasure in 18 vessels, vessels, 18 vessels, right? We're weak, right? It's, 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 a, it's an outcome. We're human. As human, we have our limitations, right? Sometimes when we when we deny that, then we'll miss the beauty of our weakness. Because the 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 the, the when we accept and know who we are, we're strong in, in, in certain areas, but generally as human beings, we're we're mortal beings, right? You know, sometimes we because when we when things are working for us, we think we're immortal, we're God, <laughs> you know, and we 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 we, we then begin to overdo things. You know, pride gets in the way, ego gets in the way. We think we're gonna live forever. You know, sorry to tell you, you're not gonna live forever. Even if you live up to 120 years, you're gonna die one day. You know, but you know, so whether things are going well for us or not we need to always remember we're human we're mortal we have limited time here and also we have weaknesses in our life right you know whether things are going on well for us or not right so when we're cognizant of our weakness then we're able to then defend ourselves against them obviously yes we are need to be cognizant of our strengths also you know while we can use our strengths to increase and better ourselves but we must never forget that we have weaknesses also, right? And those weaknesses can make a mess of us, can make, make mince meal of us if we take them for granted, you know? That recognition of, of our weakness, you know, is the place where then we can receive help. We can receive help, you know, rather than trying to hide it. <laughs> you know, don't, people don't know how... how only they look when they're trying to behave as if they are, they don't have weaknesses. You're trying to hide your plaster or hide your wound away and behave like someone that's never been wounded, someone that's never been broken, someone that's never been disappointed, someone that's never been failed or failed before. You're lying. Every human has been failed before. Every human has missed it somewhere before. 
right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It should not define you. It's just an event. It's not a person. Failure is not a person. It is an event. Something happened. It should not define you. You are you, irrespective of the journey of your life. You are who you call yourself to be. You know, and you should be proud of yourself. You have missed it. So you're human, right? It's not to then sit on that. There's a whole lot more that the world has for you, right? Don't define yourself by your mistake. Don't define yourself also by your victory, right? Because there are bigger victories for you tomorrow. Don't limit yourself by what, what you have achieved. There's a whole lot more to conquer, right? Your father's compound is not the biggest. No matter how big your compound is, there are bigger compounds than you. You know, you're a thousandaire, you can be a millionaire. If you're a millionaire, you can be a billionaire. If you're a billionaire, you can be a trillionaire, right? There's always a place called death that you can get to. You know, don't let your, don't let your last success, you know, defeat you, right? Rather, always be engaged, be mindful, be conscious, be aware, right? And keep growing, keep growing. Keep growing, keep growing, you know. So the second quote there talks about there are two pillars of happiness. Obviously, love, like we said, if love equates to pleasure, makes us happy, easy. <laughs> if someone loves you, you're going to be happy, you know. But that doesn't happen all the time. Even the people that you love sometimes disappoint you, you know. Are you then going to stop being happy? No, there's another place of happiness whereby you can endure the temporary disappointments, you know, temporary disappointments, going through the pain to get back, you know, to the pleasure, right? Don't forget, like I started, there are two motivators, natural motivators, pain and pleasure, right? None of, neither of them is permanent. They are temporal. They are temporal. Pain is temporal. Pleasure is temporal. You should never allow either of them to defeat you, right? Because there's a pain does not mean that you should give up. Because there's a pleasure does not mean you should get into your head and make you go lose your lose control. You use you you use pain, you use pleasure, never let them use you. You use pain, you use pleasure, never let them use you. If they use you, you will fail. They will conquer you. If you use them, you'll triumph over them and you'll be a victor every day of your life. Pain and pleasure are to be used. They are not to use you. Right? Great. The 